Where's the son? Where's the son? Because it's more like they wanted, my, they wanted me. It's like a son for a son. And I said to my mother, we have tried everything and nothing has worked, mama. You have lost your money. I had no direction. I was confused. I was more sick and even worse, emotionally sick and spiritually sick. The 14 years of my experience and the interpretation of other people's dreams that I did for all these years, you can actually learn this thing in just three days, maybe. Hi, my name is Nicholas Mbanjwa. I'm a father, husband, pastor, and an author. In 2011, I had an experience in November the 26th where my mother was held by the community. It was a rioting crowd of people who had suspected her of witchcraft. In this incident, she was poured on with paraffin yes, so that they could light a matchstick and have her bent down to the ground alive. So it happened that uh, due to this issue, it was uh, based on a few group of people from a particular family. We come from, uh, we come from the same uh, village from the Eastern Cape, from Mount Elif. So this family, had, uh, for tradi for, it's been for a while where they were suspecting a family of witchcraft and stuff. This went as far as to my uh, grandmother, which was this, from the side of my mother. So it happened that during uh, this moment, they had uh, actually put in, like they had created this ambience that was in the community where everyone felt that they could actually uh, ban my mother because of they had a son that they had lost, so uh, they, were, they wanted me now. It's, 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 it's some sort of a stuff of a, a son for a son, you know, the ideology of Christ, a teeth for a teeth, a tooth for a tooth. So it happened that during the time when this happened, I was not there because I, I had found a way to be uh, rescued, I believe, by God. Going back to that uh, Friday, it was Friday, the day before this Saturday incident took place. My pastor actually booked a place. It was um, in um, Frenching Val. So we had been in a camp with a few group of women. So in this camp, we were um, praying and then it was a uh, fasting as well. So there were other few people from the church, which was from House of Prayer Ministries, which is based in Swaneville. So it happened that during the time when this happened, uh, before actually it happened, my pastor, he booked for two of us. It was me and a friend, Smusiso. Uh, Smusiso couldn't make it because when he was called, so he had switched off his phone and then firstly his phone was going on voicemail, so which meant that I had to go for two days. Instead, I was supposed to go until the next uh, Saturday morning and then would come back with pasta because they've been there since the previous Monday. Then it happened because Musa couldn't make it, so I had to be there twice, which was uh, that Friday as well as that Saturday, so I, would, I had to come back Sunday, Sunday morning. So that Saturday morning, I would have arrived home if Smusiso had made it. And then at 11 in the morning, it's when the community came in. These guys came from a distant extension uh, from where we're living in, from extension five. So they came like from block one. It's uh, like five kilometers away. So when they came in, they began to, they, they came with a large crowd of people because people like in Africa, if someone hears something like this is, we found a witch, so people would be there, all of them. And then that's how it happened. But. Uh, luckily, my mother managed to make it because my uncle was quick enough to arrive with his taxi and then he managed to actually uh, have a uh, walk into the taxi and then they, dra they drove off, they sped off. Uh, the large crowds began to gather stones and then throw, you know, to the taxi. So this thing was uh, really, really sad for me. It was such an experience that began to break me. I, begin I believe personally that it was my defining moment. Now, to retract back uh, before this incident took place, I believe that God began to show me my destiny. To, he began to reveal God, his omniscient power, that he is well aware of the future as much as he can see the present. So it happened that it was in 2009, 2009. this took place in 2011. Now, we're going back uh, in 2009. 2009, on the 29th of March, I got born again. I accepted Jesus as my Savior. It was on a Sunday. And then about three months to four months down the line, I began to have a, a, a terrible dream. This dream bothered me. I believe that God, uh, this dream, is it, what began to bring me to the course of my life and destiny and the gift that God has given me. So in this dream, I dreamt walking with my pastor. 
we were walking a distance. So in this journey, it was a dusty street, and it was this place is based in Kahiso, not in Swaneville. So, but at this time, I was living in Swaneville, not in Kahiso. So it happened that in this journey, dusty road, we were walking, and I was tired. When I looked, my pastor was on my left side. He was wearing his formal clothes, you know, looked best. He looked at his best, and then his formal shoes as well. But I had patched clothes. They seemed like they were a brownish in color. It's like they lost the color because of um, the, the heat of the sun and uh, as well as the rains. You know, it's like they've been through much, through much rains, water, as well as um, the sun. So they were patched. So whilst walking in this journey, I noticed that the soles of my feet were red hot. And then, but my pastor, my pastor was fine. I had this knowledge in the dream that uh, my pastor was expecting a, ba a baby boy because he had two girls by then. So he was actually really, I knew that he wanted a son. He did tell me after, after I told him the dream. So it's like in this dream, he was expecting a baby boy. And then we got to a place whereby uh, we landed. Uh, there was a huge gate in front of us, those ancient gates uh, that was in front of us. We we're waiting for the gate to open. Before it could be opened, uh, I woke up from the dream. And then I realized later that if a dream happens to close off before you see the end of it, it means that you're, the participant of the dream's uh, will is more involved and it is the one that should determine the outcomes. That's what God is uh, telling us in that instance. So it happened that I went and I told my pastor the dream and I narrated the dream to him. And then my pastor turned and said, it's a good dream because you were walking on top of the blood of Jesus, the red hot souls, you know. He said, you're walking on the blood of Jesus. And then I was so down you know i was like wow pastor how, how do you do that like the ability to interpret dreams and my pastor said to me it's easy you can do that when you have the word he said you have more of the word in you and then it'll be easy for you to interpret dreams my pastor was right only to find that he was wrong on the interpretation but he was right to say that true dream interpretation takes scriptures but he was wrong uh, to say that i was working on the blood years would prove this dream that it was really something else other than what my pastor told me now this is 2011, this incident where my mother was uh, actually accused of witchcraft and then they wanted me. My mother told me that the people that got in, as immediately as they got into the yard, the first thing they did was to bash all the doors open and then search for me in every room saying, where's the sun, where's the sun? Because it's more like they wanted, my, they wanted me, it's like a son for a son because they believed which my mother was involved in killing their, their child, you know, who passed on. It was some years back, I cannot really remember. And then it happened that I survived like that. So my mother managed as well to survive. So it happened now that uh, during the course of that experience, I had forgotten the dream. I had forgotten the dream. It was in 2011. Totally forgot. So it happened with, when I looked back, that's when I kind of figured, with, the dream actually spoke about this, that God showed me this, the course uh, I would take with my pastor. I went on to live with him, it was in Kahiso, where the dream took place. So during the time when I was living with my pastor, he, my pastor began to ill-treat me. It was, it, it was worse, the treatment there. And then I was a youth leader in the ministry. I was also a secretary in the church, so I was very much busy. So I would eat only once a day. It was at night. I wouldn't eat the entire day. That's how stingy the environment was. And then I was so much more involved in the ministry as well as I was working in the call center. So it was an energy environment. It was so hard to focus with an you know, empty stomach. So it happened in a moment of time that I got to a place whereby I was overworked in ministry. I remember that in June of that year, it was in 20, uh, it must have been 2013. Uh, June of 2013, I was so over, I was so, I was so overwhelmed that I began to preach the entire month as well as during the weeks as well, the youth, since I was the youth leader. And then I was so empty on the inside. I began to ask God questions concerning this because I was frustrated. I wasn't healed as well. Since after 2012, 2011, the incident, I never took time to go through a healing process, no counseling, no nothing. So they had me working in ministry. They had this tendency that I was strong. So they kind of put me onto the field and then I was still bleeding on the inside. So I took time to actually reflect. And then that's when I was reminded of this dream. Because whenever you dream of walking, it means that this thing is tied to destiny. And then whoever you walk with, that means with this destiny is tied to that 
that person. So it means which is now God was actually showing me in 2009 before this thing would take place in 2011 that I was actually going to have a destiny tied with my pastor where I was overworked and then I was uh, like emotionally overwhelmed where the patched clothes, the brown, the, it, it, it means the anxiety, you know, it also means that as well. It can also mean depression and stuff when you dream of a patched, you know, that type of a, uh, what is it, a, a, a dirty, a dirty, you know, colorless brown, if I can put it in simpler words. My nephew, his dream was like this. I remember that he told me a week before this took place or something, it was two weeks or a week before. He said to me, you know, I had this dream where I was coming from school, but it was at night. And then when I came, I was going uh, to the house. But then I found which the house was more like it was burning. And the interesting part is that when it's burning, it's not burning where it's actually at, but it's in a different location. So there was a place when you enter uh, Swaneville, it was called a uh, Wuma Queen. So the place is called in Shangan because a lot of people who live there, 90% to 80% to 90% are Shangans, and then there's about 10 to 15% of Tsongas. So Shangan, I'm actually inferring to the people from Mozambique, was we know Tsongas are from Limpopo. So this, uh, the, the, this place, the, 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 the naming of it, it means Wumakwen, uh, which means where are you? It's more like it's a question. So the dream actually spoke of that because of our being, you know, uh, without a home and then being uh, homeless for a while. I believe that this is what God was showing us because even names can mean something in dreams. At the same time, my nephew says now the place our home was located here, but then he said, when he saw the house, he saw it burning. And then when he looked closely, he said it would tend to be like a traditional house there the hearts with touch from the rurals. And then he says when he observed, he would see a, a black plastic covering it. So when you see something like that, when it's a, a heart, a heart can mean something that is belief, a belief, a traditional belief. So it means the instigators of this issue had a specific traditional belief. It might be due to the issues of witchcraft and stuff. And then uh, the burning, it can mean the destruction where we, the, the, that we faced when the house uh, was burnt. As well as um, the plastic, the black plastic, black can mean something that means from evil. Like if you see a black snake, it can mean an attack from the enemy directly. Uh, but the context of the dream also defines that. Because sometimes you can dream brushing a snake where God here is telling you, there's someone who's close and you're, entertain, you're entertaining that person, but that person is actually capable of mischief or danger in your life. But in this instance now, the plastic was black, which meant this thing is evil. No, there's darkness. Uh, upon us, the house, meaning even the family as well, uh, which was also the spirit of death, I believe. That is how, which, from which God was able to rescue my mother from. And then with this experience, that's when I sat down in my life. And then for the past, actually, uh, 14 years since this incident took place of the dream in 2009, 14 years from now, I began to actually have an interest in dreams because God has been moving a lot in my life through dreams. And then I took in, I took in a lot of study with the years going and then I've been interpreting a lot of people's dreams and stuff and then learning more about that so with my experience from now since looking back into the uh, looking in hindsight is believe I, I believe personally that I could have actually vetoed the outcomes had I known what I know today but now uh, but now we actually have uh, what is this? We have an opportunity as believers that we can veto certain instances from happening. Sometimes even if the a situation cannot really be altered much, but I believe that God can have, you know, the punishment or whatever it might be that can come. It might not be as severe as it was meant to be. Going back to uh, this thing of uh, my experience in, in dreams, I remember that uh, in when I was about the age of 14 to 12, I had been into this thing of ancestry. So I began to see a distinction between how Christians interpret dreams as well as how people who go for Sangomas interpret dreams. It's quite really a, a different. I'll give an example by this. This guy that called me and he said to me, I had this dream of water, but it, the, but the dream ended where the guy saw the frog and then he says the frog was on top of me. So in this instance, if it was Sangomas, the Sangomas were going to tell him and said, if you dream of water, then there's a frog that begins to be like, to be upon you, it meant what it's the uh, what is it the marine spirits or your ancestors in terms of the marine spirits. They can actually define it because of my experience because I, I got saved having come from that background of Sangomas from the age of seventeen. With Sangomas, 
is that dreams tend to focus a lot. I know a, a lot of times which they, they, they give you a lot of fear and a, a lot of confusion as well. So this dream for them, it would go like this. A, a person many times, whenever you see a frog in a dream, they would tell you which it's either it means a, an, a, a case of ill luck a case of ill luck, it's, I can call it a street. Depending again, because there's also this frog. So this type of a frog, it looks watery and it has different thighs than normal frogs. I had an experience with it once in my life when I was still uh, in these things of Sangomas because I had done, I did Mvumagufa, so I had red and white beads under Amanda. Uh, the, the, it's, it's, it's a different type of Sangomas, a different category. So I had, this ex I had an experience with this frog. So they told me which this frog was a frog from, it was actually these water spirits but they kind of morphed to this particular frog. They also believe that. So some can tell you it's either when you dream of a frog, it's an illac, uh, it's clito, someone is trying to actually bring that curse upon you, or they can tell you which it's, an, it's, it's, it's a spirit of the, it's a marine spirit where the ancestors visited you or you have a specific calling, you have to go or twice. When I was um, 12 years, I had a, a starting dream. This, this, is what, this is my first uh, observable, in fact, first imperative dream. It's the one dream that uh, shook me. In this time, I think I must have been doing, I don't know if it was the fifth grade, or, but I was in primary school. So in this dream, I dreamt being taken under the water. And then when I got into under the water, I realized what deep, deep, deep under the water, it's like a normal land, like ours. There's mountains, and then there was a hut and then there's landscape grasses and everything so there was this woman i've never seen her face before i've never seen her face even to this day i cannot even know who it was so the woman had beads you know these beads on her face so you couldn't see the face so we were, it was all of us children who were there so it was more like we we're being initiated and then there's so and stuff like that so every kid they would call out the name and say, what well, it's your turn now to return home. And then it's like kids were collected. In my knowledge, it's like they would come with a cow and then put into the water and then the kid would come out. So the woman would tell the kid, well, so and so you're next. So I was one of those who ne was never collected, you know, in this dream. I remember which this thing, it must have took place from uh, 3 a.m. in the morning as, and went all the way until 10 a.m. Normally my mother would wake me up. I don't know at this moment why she didn't wake me up. And then until I woke up from the dream, I wasn't collected from the water. And then that is when the process of me uh, uh, failing, going sick began. And then that is also how I actually began. Firstly, I was taken to Umakosi, uh, Umakosi Mamiya, and then that's when she began to explain. She was also an aunt to the family. And because because she was a, more like a relative to my mother so she was more like an aunt to me so she began to explain to me how this thing happened and then she told me which there's a spirit of now the water spirits that is actually a, a upon me and then which this thing is generational coming from my father and my mother but it's strong on me than it was because born they ran away so it was something like that and I began to be so 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 sick I remember which there wasn't I had something that was happening in me where I used it was to it was in it was during the winter i used to be light skinned extremely light skinned so in winter you, you could see my veins purple as well as my hands so this thing began to happen that even at school i would hold a pen and then you would see like you know you could see the you know the the, the shape of how the pen was in my hand so they explained this thing later after I got saved, which this is a heart problem where the blood is not really clean, the one that comes into the heart, it lives the same way it is. I'm not into medicine, but I had it set that way. So in this experience, they're telling me, Wuti, when you are having this condition as a child, you do not go over the age of 16. By the age of 15 to 16, many children actually pass away. By the grace of God, I made it. So I happened to focus, to face a lot of attacks and uh, quite a lot of tormenting dreams as well. And then by the time when I was 14, it was worse that I was sick. So they told me that I had to be uh, put in, I had to go through a process here, initiation. But this initiation, because they were wanting to appease, they said, the ancestors. So it wasn't supposed to be in Twasa. Because if being a Twasa, Makosi, Mami, I was so afraid. She was a mother, you know, she loved me, that woman. She was afraid which if this had power, I wouldn't be able to finish my school and I was still in primary. So they wanted to appease. So into appease, but the first process they took was what they gave me e, e land or they did e ritual. It was a, an event. In this event is called Invumagofa, where I had to accept this calling. But while accepting it, it, it I would be delaying whilst 
already accepting it. So they put in Simbi, the bits, they were red and white uh, as in Dawa because if it was only white, it wouldn't appease because the red was also said to have been added so that it tries to minimize its uh, to appease so that it doesn't come so strong on me. So I had dreams from then on. I began to understand with the gift of dreams I was born with as God tells Jeremiah to say you are anointed in the belly. It's not like you are anointed when you were born but you were anointed before you were during the, your formation in the belly. And then he says, God, I separated your prophet. So I, it's what I've discovered with the Sangomas and other people, they were born with these gifts. So the difference is what spirit are they yielding on? Is it in the kingdom of God or is it in the kingdom of darkness? But they were actually born with, uh, with the gift. So the spirit is the one that begins to, take, to dictate as to which uh, uh, route or direction it will take. So with me now, that's how it began. And then it happened that by the time when I was 17 years, that is when I got saved. When this woman had passed on, I had no direction. I was confused. I was more sick and even worse, emotionally sick and spiritually sick. And then that's when Jesus stepped into my life. I remember that the reason why I gave my life to Jesus because of a testimony of a young woman who said, if you want your healing, try Jesus. And I said to my mother, we have tried everything and nothing has worked, mama. You have lost your money. Why don't we try this Jesus? And he's for free. You won't have to, you won't be cost a thing. And my mother said, we have really tried everything. Let's just try it. Because we're really poor by that time. We're extremely poor. We're, there was nothing. Everything was blocked. And then that's when I got saved. It was on the 29th of March. And then everything in my life changed. And I've been healed ever since then. But now, being a Christian, this is how I interpreted the dream to the person. I had to ask him, what's your belief system? Because many times you find which people can confuse two of these interpretations. And then they try to tie them as one. But you realize what they, they do not mix. So I interpreted the dream and told the guy. And I said to him, what God is showing you is showing you that the problem you're having on your finances according to the book of revelation where we see in chapter 16 the scriptures show us that frogs can also mean it's a financial system so in this guy when a frog is on top of you it can actually mean which there's a financial depression that is upon this guy so god began to reveal that through the dream and then i began to tell him and there was something as well as tied to his job the craft he was doing in the dream and then the guy began to confirm he said yes uh, i'm having a problem in my in the job that i'm currently in and whatever this is happening i'm actually also going through a lot of financial stress because i'm a prayer doing at home and then he began to express all of that so now you can tell which dreams from god's kingdom and the ones from sangomas are quite different in that dreams from god always bring in a solution to the matter and then at the same time they can really pinpoint a problem then instead of saying no you just saw it's clear to someone is trying to bewitch you so instead of this maybe let's say you go for a cleansing and stuff but instead now it becomes clear which you know god is actually saying quite something because the person even confirmed this no, actually, I'm going through the same situation financially as you're saying and with the job as well as you're saying and all of that. Now, with God, this is how we tell a dream is really from God. A dream that is from God, according to the book of Genesis 41 verse 16, uh, Joseph says something interesting. He says to uh, Pharaoh when he's before him, when he had to interpret his dream, uh, Pharaoh's dream was terrifying. Both of his dreams were terrifying. The guy woke up with fear and then Joseph says to him, God will give you an answer of peace. That's the key from God's dreams. Dreams that come from God give an answer of peace. Anytime when a dream is interpreted and then you find which when the, your dream is interpreted, you are left more confused than you were in the beginning. It's really not from God. Number two, if you find witty, whatever dream that has been interpreted to your life, it has left you with fear, maybe fear of the unknown or fear of the outcome, whatever that's going to happen, you can tell that this dream is really not from God. Because even with Pharaoh's dream, it had fear in it, but then the interpretation was positive, and then it showed which there's a way that God can actually bring in a way. And then Pharaoh was relieved because Joseph says God is going to give you a dream of peace. Any dream that is biblically interpreted by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, it satiates the heart and it brings, you know, that satisfaction where you realize what he, now because Jesus through John in the first book of John chapter 2 verse 20 and 27 he says we have an unction in you you need no man teach you doesn't mean that we don't need teachers but he says you know all things so in a dream interpretation that is actually precise you can have a confirmation in your spirit that this is it you have that aha moment in your spirit so with this experience I began to realize again something else that a uh, over the journey of dream interpretation that 60% of the dreams we have uh, come due to 
our worrying or maybe let's say something you're contemplating on or something that you're meditating on so this is one key that i can tell you to say if maybe you come to a point in your life where you are stressed about a certain area maybe in your marriage or maybe in your finances or maybe in your family if you take time to think about that or meditate on it you might find which god will bring you a dream but the dream will also have an answer toward that there's an example of that i'll give you i remember that in the beginning of this year my wife and I were stressed on an issue concerning my daughter with the uh, preschool. So we had this preschool that we found last year. But in this preschool, it, was, it wasn't as big. So we felt which it's good for my baby girl. And then it happened that along the journey, there's another one I saw. It was a big preschool, quite big. It's an early childhood development center. It was big. I don't know how many kids are there. It's got classes. And then I told my wife about it. My wife said, no, I don't think it's a good idea for my daughter to go there because she won't get the necessary attention there are a lot of kids and then i felt which she has a point so we took our daughter to this one which was just a you know menial it was just a sizable it's good and then during that time we realized which we were quite not happy about the administration and the system so not happy we began to talk and converse as to what can be the next step should we let a query on or find a better one and stuff so it happened that the night of our discussion we didn't come to a conclusion my wife had a dream and then in this dream my wife dreamt that i was holding um, i was actually holding my daughter and then uh, she, yeah, now she was holding a, 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 the, the, the baby boy so this place had swimming pools and then my wife took my daughter from me and then she placed the, the child into the uh, swimming pool. It was a small pool. When she placed my daughter, it was ankles deep. And then she began to see from a distance that there were feces. And then she pulled my daughter out. And then I took my daughter and then she took the baby boy. And then I took my daughter to a big pool. So before taking her into this big pool, I, I, I actually put her into slides. There are these slides next to swimming pools. And then she went through this slide and then phew, into the water. When she went into this huge pool, my wife says she observed that my baby began, uh, she was scared when she'll drown. But now she began to swim. My daughter has no experience in swimming. When she began to swim, my wife was very petrified and then she went on screaming and shouting which no i'm endangering the child and then one woman she stepped into this woman said no leave her let her be she learn and then she went on screaming again which she's endangering the child and then she said a second one a second woman said leave her let her be she learn and then she said my wife when she looked back into the pool she observed with my daughter now is swimming with calm with ease now the funny part is when she woke up from the dream she was like this is a strange dream i don't know why i would dream that and i said to my wife immediately there was like a light that switched on into my mind and i said to my wife this is a dream concerning god showing us this, a solution to our to the problem we worried about last night and i said to my wife the small swimming pool is actually the small uh, preschool we sent my daughter so the feces we're seeing it is the disgusting things that we're going to discover concerning their administration and then i said now the big one where I took my daughter into and then you were worried. It's the one where you thought Wait, she won't get the necessary attention. And then instead I said to you, Wait, let's try it. And then I said to my wife, God is showing us Wait, if we take our daughter there, it will be big and it will be good for her learning. It will be an environment that is good for her destiny. That's the one thing that also proves to us that as parents we are stewards. It's not really that these are our children, but they are God's children. So we are stewards to raise children for God. So in this case, God was involved into with in this in with us picking the right place for our daughter so immediately what we did is we just went in with the dream and then prayerfully though we also prayed we prayed and then we had peace in our spirits and then we began to take our daughter and we moved her to this one and we removed her from this other one and then it happened that as time goes by because we had a lady who's a friend of my wife who also took the daughter to the first one she was also not satisfied there were many complaints that began to come out the other kids actually were said to have been taken out of it so we realized with my wife and we said no now these were the feces we were seeing in that uh, you know uh, pool before we took her to the big one and then uh, then we also had wonderful feedbacks about our daughter's performance from the uh, new one where we took her into uh, this one with the proper administration and stuff so the point is that with god it does speak in dreams and that everything in our lives not only uh, you know in issues that have to do with uh, risks you know or maybe things that have to do with a uh, uh, pain or turmoil or traumas but God also speaks to us about many other things in dreams for example if you dream that you're in front of your house it means and then you're looking you know to the horizon it means that God is saying 
I'm showing you things to your future. And then if you look, dreaming of any something, there's a there's a lady who had sent me a dream. I think it was last year where she dreamt where she was in the backyard of her home and then the, uh, there was a storm that began to come and then I began to tell her there's a situation that is going to begin to attack your family and this thing is something that from the past because anything that you dream of you see the backyard God is actually showing you issues of your past so dreams every, every, every item in dreams uh, says something there's an element every element in dreams is just saying something about what God is saying to your life and again there's something every symbol in dreams also has a meaning in it for example a car if you you dream a car if you dream an airplane it also really speaks of something that you're doing it can be a business it can be something that takes you from one place to another it's a, a business does that financially it can be a family a small car and it can but also colors matter because if you say what you like the dream I told you about in my experience uh, red uh, red hot uh, feet the soles of my feet it actually meant in that instance again the context it actually meant a uh, suffering so in my book the book that I actually wrote I began to put all these things together for people to not go through the same experience instead of you having to go through the 14 years of my experience and the interpretation of other people's dreams that I did for all these years you can actually learn this thing in just three days maybe if you can read the book faster so I take all these experiences and put it up into a book so that people can be able to learn it quicker and then be able to know uh, that they are texts and the texts of the enemy like dreaming a uh, uh, running where you see what God is exposing an attack of your enemy of the enemy or, or concerning your life so this is what I do so I just put a book as well concerning this so that people can learn as well as how to stop bad uh, uh, dream predictions from happening like I how I would have done it back then like we also had an experience where our daughter was uh, we dreamt my wife dreamed three snakes uh, killing my daughter and then uh, we knew which of the three attacks coming and then began to pray and then she went through intensive you know um, it was what is it uh, progressive attacks but in three months time something like that so the, the last one we remember which she couldn't breathe we had to take her to the hospital and then we remember what we had prayed on it instead of us being shocked some would ask can dreams be taught dream interpretation yes it can be because the angel says to Daniel in chapter 9 verse 21 to 22 I came to give you the skill skill is something that you can learn and you can pass on to another to understand visions and interpret them so in this point now I'm saying you can get the book it's just on my um, website www.nicolasmbanja.com you will get it on the description section you can just click the description section and it'll just send you straight to the book and you can purchase it we've made it an ebook it's an electronic book you can read it on your device your phone you can read it on your laptop everywhere you are at work during lunch times and then you can be blessed hi my name is nicholas mbanjo and i have been through the most